All right, you're welcome back. I have you with me, a TV host, a model, an entertainment personality, Idia Aisian. Hello, Ibuka. Did I say that right? Is it Aisian? Aisian. Aisian. That's, is that a, an Edo name? Yes, it's Edo. What part of Edo State? Benin City. Yeah, Benin Gegongo. <laughs> yes. Wait, did you ever live there? Um, no. I lived in Benin. Really? So I'm more Benin than you even. Oh. <laughs> nice, oh. to, nice to be here. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm well. I'm very, very well, actually. Yeah. You were saying before we came on that I shouldn't ask you any scary <laughs> questions. What do you have to hide? <laughs> Nothing. So why would you Nothing. be worried about scary questions? Nothing. Do you have any controversies? No. How many babies out do you don't know about? <laughs> Four, Four from different People are watching, they're going to start taking it. <laughs> I actually believe you. Thanks for being here today. I mean, you work on TV. How long have you been on TV in Nigeria for? Now it's almost two years. Okay. Almost two full yeah. interesting years. I knew, I knew you a while ago when I was doing my master's. Okay, yeah, we yeah, yeah. American University. Yeah, we met, you were we met in, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Very briefly and all of that. And uh, were you doing TV then? No, not so at you, all. You, I was studying journalism okay. at the time. So TV yeah. was always the plan? It was initially the plan, but then I got sidetracked. By? Work, parents, demands, you know. So, so when did TV come back into the picture? Um, so basically, when I was at American, I was working at Fox News. And okay. then I also worked at Discovery for a little bit, Discovery Channel. Okay. Um, by the time I moved to New York for my master's, I started modeling. I was like, this is what I really want to do with my life. Um, but... As I was doing that, my parents were like, you know, you need a full-time job, you need a stable job, you know, you will die as a journalist, you will <laughs> die as a model, as a starving artist. So um, I was applying for jobs. There was a job that I got that I was like, oh my God, I'm, inter I'm interested in international development, but not working at an investment bank. At the time, everybody was like, I would be crazy not to take the job. So I took the job, and that's what brought me back to Nigeria, because okay. they were working on projects in different countries in Africa. Okay. Um, while I was here, I met a producer that said I'd be great on television. It'd been years, so I didn't know how that would pan out. Immediately, we, we shot the show, and I saw myself on TV. I was like, I'm oh, out. Lord, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> and it's been yeah. two years now. It's That's Spice TV, right? Um, Spice TV, yes. How many shows do you do there? I had three shows. Like One is more of like um, a filler, like a short show, where you just show people things that are in season to wear. One is the Nigerian version of Fashion Police, and the third one is a show where people write in with issues and problems about love, relationships, health care, abuse, etc. Okay. ETC, so. How's that going? Well, how are those going? Now they're <laughs> better than ever because, you know, the channel is pushing more online. I think everybody has realized that social media holds the key it's crazy. to everything. Um, so we're getting a lot more feedback than we used to. Um, of course, like the more I pushed my personality and everything, the more people were interested in just asking me questions on the street. Hey, Idi, I have this issue. And I'm like, I'm not really an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really an expert, but it's what I love to do. And I love the idea of meeting new people on the shows that are actually really good at, you know, the whole psychology yeah. of love thing. And that would put a lot of pressure on you to never put a foot wrong. Exactly. You, you can't not dress. That's two negatives. You can't <laughs> afford to dress like badly ever or never, wouldn't you have ever, like a ever. mistake like never, why ever. is this sleeve longer than <laughs> i always have to act like everything was planned absolutely yeah. planned like i'm <laughs> fabulous 24 <24/7, so>. 7. <laughs> great yeah. stuff now um you were modeling before this now um, yes. how, how long did you model for Offic um, professionally for a year and a half in well, New York. That was it's pretty short. Why, 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 was, why that short? Why Be not longer? Because immediately I was doing it while I was doing my master's at mm -hmm. NYU and when I was like, oh my God, this could actually happen, then my parents were like, you what's going on with the this. job? Exactly. What's going so on with the job? Why didn't you model here? I, I have started doing modeling work here, but I had already done the big shows even before I ever went to school in America. So I've done MMR, I've done LFDW, but after doing like Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week and coming to Nigeria, what I found out was that TV actually helped give a platform okay. to be able to put a face to modeling. So in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of models that would do the biggest campaigns. And I had an issue with the fact that you see girls do really big jobs, but you wouldn't even know the girl's name. You just know, oh, that model's face is familiar. She does everything, but you don't know who she is. This gave me the opportunity to do the BMW, the Black Opal campaign, stuff like that. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, the following helps, the following from TV yeah. helped. That's an interesting strategy because I know a lot of models in Nigeria always complain about the fact that the pay here is... Exactly. 
exactly. crappy, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time on this show in five years, you know, it's really yeah. crappy. And, yeah. you know, which is why I was asking if why didn't you model here? But you, you are doing more exactly. campaigns than exactly. runway stuff, right? Because I'm not going to do um, a job where you're going to pay me 50K or 100K. Yeah. It's just, it's not worth it. And honestly, I feel like part of work is, is feeling fulfilled, you yeah. know, feeling like you're actually doing something that you can add to your resume and that would also be something that the client is happy with. If you give me 100K, I don't know how I'm going to feel while I'm doing the shoots. To why, be do you think, why do you think it's not growing? Because you find that the fashion industry as a whole in Nigeria is booming. I okay. mean, yeah. course, which is why I did that. Yeah. I mean, there's designers everywhere. Exactly. A lot of designers are churning out line after line, exactly. season after season. Exactly. You know, you open an Instagram, your Instagram page, every other feed is exactly. a new outfit you know, by someone. Exactly. You know, the, every, all the extensions of that. Stylists are doing well. Fashion, uh, yeah. what do they call them? Personal shoppers. Are there's all of these well. industries. Well, you know, but I the models themselves seem to be the ones who are not as, you know, prominent as they should be. Ebuka eh. You know, <laughs> I think the truth really is that unless you build that following and you show a designer or a stylist or whoever, makeup artist, whatever, why they need to pay you, unless you show them that there's actually an influence or a point of using you for their campaigns or shoots or whatever, you're never going to be able to demand money unless there's value behind that money. And I think that's why, you know, online, social media, um, the social media strategy is so important because yeah. now you can tell people that, look, when I post an outfit, so, so, so amount of people want to buy the outfit. Or when I'm at an event wearing this bag, now five or ten more people have bought this bag. People like to see facts. People yeah. like to know that their money is not wasted. Yeah. And I think... That's how being yeah. on TV. It's like the age of uh, Kendall Jenner and Eggs. Gigi Hadid. Uh, yeah. You're a celebrity before you become. <laughs> You're a celebrity before, before you, become. you become a celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Now I want I want to talk about you as a TV presenter. Now I mean it's it's a, also a very interesting space in this country. Yeah. Extremely. Like there's, there's a lot more stations now or channels where people yeah. you know can work and do a variety of things. You love fashion, so you've Absolutely. been able to fuse your love for TV and fashion into all of the shows that you're doing now. But how are you finding the job here, or the space here? So I would <laughs> say that we are the ones channeling Nigeria t Nigerians to be ready for a lot of things that they're not necessarily ready for. So the show style 101 is kind of like fashion police. Are people really ready for someone to sit down and say they know everything about fashion and critique fashion? No, not necessarily. So you have to have a really thick skin and that's the one thing that I learned when I got to Nigeria. Yeah. You know, I was always like, oh, piece of cake, like what's the bill? Okay, they'll abuse me, I won't read it. But no, it's, it's more than that. It's walking into a room and people are like, Okay, this idiot that, that does <laughs> I too know, you know, um, and it, it, it gets really stressful because people don't understand that there's TV, idia, and then there's, there's idia. Yes, I, I do believe that I'm a fashionista, but I mean, we're learning every day, we're, we're growing every day, but those, the, the show itself is something that I don't think that people fully grasp yet. So yeah. people are angry all the time. They're saying, why did she say this about somebody's outfit? Like recently, there was a lot of... Um, drama around a huge celebrity that I happened to say needed a stylist and it didn't go very well. Who like, was that? I was almost murdered. Casey. By the celebrity? No, by everybody. Like, by, by his the, fans? Ah, ben. Oh. <laughs> you came for Casey Limpopo? I didn't come for him. Like, I was, I was asked Have you met him since then? Have you I met actually him? interviewed him last week and okay. I don't think he knew it was me. Oh, okay. So uh, the whole time I was holding my breath, I was like... <laughs> comes with a job. Yeah. You can research how John Rivers did it and survived all that way.